So Please. keep that in mind. So let's bring our uh, brothers, Stephen and Evan Strong on from down under. Oh, I got Evan in a panic. Oh, he's running. He's like, dad, dad, he's calling you. You got to put that 420 on hold. <laughs> So let's bring them on and uh, thank you, Stone. I'll boot you off the screen now and uh, maybe you want to toss the link, uh, the Zoom room link into the uh, chat room so that everybody can grab that. And guys, copy and paste that into whatever it is that you paste it into and uh, we'll get together with uh, Stone. So uh, here we go. Our brothers, Stephen and Evan Strong, our alien ancestry, forgotten origin, and man, uh, Forgotten Origin really rings in uh, with the Earth made today because our focus is not the Earth. Our focus is humanity that mm. is living on Earth. And uh, Forgotten Origin is a very appropriate um, you know, term, label, statement, I guess, uh, because we really have forgotten our origins. And uh, that's why we are, uh, you know, steadily digging into the past and finding out how our ancestors lived and uh, how they lived with harmony with themselves and with the animals of the world and with spirit and in the dream world and uh, you know and how we can incorporate that with technology and television and smartphones and fax machines and cds and you know how do we incorporate that into our modern life along with the ancestral uh, way of life and uh, so that's kind of the tale I'm going to leave for Stephen and Evan and uh, I'm sure they will tell us so guys I'll give you a half hour and then uh, I'll jump in and uh, we'll do a 10-15 minute Q&A and then uh, we will uh, call it a day and thank you for being here I appreciate you guys seems like we were just talking yesterday Hey, wait a minute. We do talk every day. So. Well, we did talk about yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. No, that's okay. We talk every day. Every day, there's messages going between Evan and I. Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Okay. Yeah. So, how do you mix all this together, right? That's the trick. Mm. Well, it's it's a difficult mix at the moment because there's Every day, um, our tech, technological people invent something new, something that we definitely, definitely need, um, and then they spend millions of dollars trying to advertise this new thing they've found so that they convince us that we need it. But the whole point is, I think what's got lost here is we don't need most of these things. I mean, oh, let's be honest about this. We, we know there's a change that's going to take place. We're fully aware of that, and we're not going to go down that path. And if people can look up on our website, and we've got all the proof to prove that, that the change that the Indigenous people were talking about did take place, and we're in that process now. So the trick is... I mean, some some of the technology was able to capture that. So yeah, that, the that's intent behind point. how yeah, you use yeah. the technology as well. Yeah, well, we've got all this proof, and it came from technology that was then shared through the internet, which is another form of technology. Well, to an extent, it's been taken off most places, but that's a different part of the same problem. But the important part of this story, and actually I was talking about, I've got some elders outside at the moment, I'm going to sort of pop in a bit as we go because I've got them there at the moment. We're talking exactly about this. The important part of this story is that if you want to be part of the change, then you have to let go of quite a bit of what they've built over the years. It's a bit like this. If you want to get involved in the injustices and fighting against them, and let's let's not talk about things you put in your arms and whether that's right or wrong, but it could be anything on this planet. It could be anything. It could be the fact that there's a group of people that some people refer to as the cabal, um, and that's probably something in that. I don't know for sure. None of us really do. We hear this stuff all the time. And it's really hard to work out what the truth is. But there is one truth in this. And it's basically that if you want to become part of the future, you can't leave yourself wallowing in and fighting against the things that you can't defeat. And what I'm concerned about right now is that people 
uh, we know of who are committed towards the change are also committing committed towards worrying about sending out emails to other people about things that are going on that we can't change. And I think that's one of the things that people have got to learn, that you have to pick your fights. And there's no way I can convince Bill Gates to change, George Soros to change, and there's no way I can convince the world leaders to actually change what they're going to do because they're actually only part of a system that's run by people further down the line. And there's nothing you can do about it. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is to take your head out of the fights that you can't win and try and focus on the positives. I mean, some people now are so concerned about whether we're going to have a war with Russia, with China, whether there's going to be terrorists knocking on the back door. Oh, there's a new one, Evan. It's called cyber terrorism. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, there's an ad on TV at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, where there's this car that's driving and there's a, a mum and a dad and a little girl in the back and she's playing with a computer. And as she turns it on, about 15 black helicopters fly above the car. I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't seen that one. No, either. and behind it there are seven black cars and four um, bike, bikes ridden with people with black leathers. Wow. And what it's got is Telstra, right? Yeah. And what it's saying is there can never be too much security because every day millions of people are trying to get into your computer, right? And there's, you can never have too much security. And when the girl puts down the actual computer, they all disappear because they only watch you while the computer it's is on. on. Right. But that's not true. We know that they continue listening and watching you when the computer is off, but they didn't put that part in. No, no. Bit of poetic license here. The yeah. truth is that you can't turn the bloody thing on. It tracks you all the time. What I'm getting at is that we've now created a society where everyone's trying to get us and we're in a constant state of computer fear, of will I have a job fear, can I pay the increasing rates that for the mortgage I've got? And if I'm young, what are my chances of actually ever owning a house in Australia? And the answer is bugger all or none. All those things become part of your daily bread. And that's what this is all about. So, ladies and gentlemen, the change that's coming is not a change where we all go back to Indigenous ways and we live in wigwams and lean-tos and then we wander around the countryside and find food. Nobody wants that. I don't want it. I want to be able to listen to music and I need a computer for that, don't I now? You do. I yeah. do need those things. But what we've got to start realising is that if you start investing in the fights that can't be won and investing in politicians or leaders to lead you to the promised land, I can tell you one thing. You're not going to stay. The important part of this story is that each person has to make their own decisions. They don't follow anyone. I'm, I really sort of get sick of people telling me about a politician, any one of them. I know there's one in particular that tell me about he's not part of the cabal, therefore let's follow him. I'm thinking, so this person has 42 other major faults of character, but one positive thing wow. it's probable that one person is not part of the cabal, but somehow that makes them a god. So. What I'm hearing here is the key is discernment. So discernment yeah. with what you, what information, because we've got information everywhere, right? So and you've got to get of, the information. You you've do. got to know and about you, it. You've got to know what's going on. Oh, but yeah. It's, it's discernment and not letting it overrun you as well. And then I guess when it comes to technology, it's also discernment. It's how it's, used, it's how it's used, what the intent behind it is. And um, here's the trick with this. If you start getting involved in the fact that um, there are chemtrails up there and there are, I see them all the time, and all this stuff, and you start sending off stuff to other people and you start fighting against it. I know one person has spent 10 years fighting against balloons uh -huh. and finally won to an extent. If you spend all that time in that negativity, you haven't progressed. You're actually in the gutter. Now, when two people are in the fight, in the gutter fighting and yelling at each other, I don't know who started and who finished it. It just looks bad. What you've got to do is you've got to pick up a belief in whatever, which means when something happens you don't think is fair, 
You just say whatever. Don't do much about it. If I can do something about it, mm. fine. Mm. Right? That's different. Now, if I could go and see Bill Gates and say, look, why don't you tell everyone what really happened? Well, I'd try. Mm. But you know what? It's not going to happen. No, you don't have that. Um, I don't have that that ability. ability So why do it? So my point is, yeah, there is a change that's coming. Believe in that change. And you know what you should do? Here's the point. How do you prepare for the change that's coming ahead? You engage with other people who are getting caught up with this and you try and convince them there is something that's going to take place. There is a change that's going to be facilitated by you and others and that you have to walk away from all the drama and chaos that they are creating. Now, I can tell you we've been told by many people, and we do know this change is taking place. Mm. So do they. So do the people who have been manipulating and doing this for ever so long. They are fully aware of the fact that change has taken place, and they also know what can they do about the change, Evan? Nothing. It's just going to happen. Yeah. But do you know what they are going to do? They're going to continue doing what they've always done, that they've always Mm -hmm. done, Mm -hmm. and they're going to do what Hitler did when he knew he was going to lose the war. When he left the country, he decimated it. He destroyed it. He blew it up. But they're not going to blow up the buildings. They're going to blow up your headspace. Mm -hmm. They're going to blow up your integrity. They're going to make you so fearful and so concerned about Mm -hmm. what's going to happen next that you won't be part of the change because you can't get your head out of the mire that they've created. Now, we do know, and Evident knows this is true too, we were told about this prophecy close to 10 years ago, and we've told people there'd be pandemics, there'd be threat of war, there'd be terrorism, people would be fearful of losing their jobs, the whole world would be suspicious, everything would be created. And it seems as one thing after another. I mean, quite recently we had the, remember we had the alien invasion of it? Oh, yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. Came out of nowhere. We just were just walking around the street <laughs> and then one day, all of a sudden, someone Ooh. said, Biden said, my God, we have a Chinese uh, weather balloon above us. Let's wait until it goes across the whole of America and when it gets to the other side down, let's shoot it down. Yes. And then straight after that, we'll pick it up even though it fell in the middle of the ocean, you wouldn't know where to find it, would you? Uh, but they did, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. But then what happened next was, and they said we didn't want to shoot it down while it was over the land because someone might get hurt. Remember that? Oh, because what, a balloon? Or yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then what happened was three more come in the next week yeah. and they shot them down while they're up above the land. But then I didn't think they could find something. No, they can't find them. So they, they can find them in the sea, but they can't find them. No, in the no, air. that's too hard because, see, when they shot them down, they have coordinates to say when the missile's released and when it has an impact on their on their machinery, they know exactly where the impact was. So it would be too hard to work out. It would have fallen straight down vertically to the ground to find. Now, those three objects which they can't find, they've now declared are not Chinese. Oh, yeah, they're a bunch of businessmen. Mm, mm. Now, well, that, no, 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 what they've said is they could be a businessman that launched it. It must have been Elon Musk on a bad day when they had some quiet business going on, rather than the big one that blew up, and they all said, that's a success. I thought, that's the first time in my life I've seen a rocket blow up, and they all said, that's a success. We did well. What I'm getting at, ladies and gentlemen, is they're all playing games at the moment. They're fear games. This is what how you prepare for this future is the first step, the most important step, is not to put aside food and provisions and all those sorts of things and start turning yourself into a full-time prepper. The most important thing is not to get involved in all the smoke cream and all the negativity they're putting up on a daily basis. It will not finish. It will continue until the final minutes. That is what they're programmed to do. It's all they know what to do. And it has worked for so damn long, it's not funny. Mm even though they know it won't continue, you've got to remember these people that I know a lot more about a lot of other things than we do. And you might think, oh, well, if they know they're going to lose, why don't they join the good side? Why don't they do that? I mean, if they know it's Look, not going to And I do think some of them already Some of have, them are. Some have. Mm. Let's make that clear. Don't be confused and think that everyone that's a reptilian, everyone that's a draconian is evil and all homo sapiens are good. Don't think like that because that's not belonging to this planet. 
what you can think like is right now that people are changing what i can i want to close with this that i hear on a daily basis people say they sense there's a change coming mm. most of these people know nothing about the change three years ago with the magic box of the roof they just sense it people are talking about it like it's something i'm feeling the whole world is falling apart which it is this is part of the deal so basically yeah they sense it but they can't put they can't put a face to it well do you know what everyone listening you can mm. and what's your job in this is your job is and this is a job of every human on this planet <coughs> is to remember quite a few people who are not going to stay here are not bad people they're just unaware people and they've never had a real chance to stop and think and analyze what's taking place or maybe it's the responsibility of the people that are listening right now to go out over the time that's left and look we're in contact with both spirits and aliens and quite a few other things that are in contact and we've also got quite a few objects that have turned up recently too and they're all telling me that this change is coming and it's not in decades it's in it's in months and maybe a couple of years but it is not in decades the time is really running out mm. and what you guys can do is very simply you go and talk about this to people and yeah sure a lot of people are going to think you're an absolute idiot and you know what you think about that you think fine that's your decision that's your judgment your job is there's a beautiful piece um in the gnostic scriptures about jesus would go out with mustard seeds and just throw them everywhere wouldn't he yeah some landed on concrete they didn't germinate some landed in the soil and didn't germinate and some did and some did after a while you throw the seeds out some, some landed in the cracks yeah mm. and came up through the cracks and they knocked started to push the concrete away mm. that's what this is all about it's called seed dreaming and yeah there is a giant change that's taking place and how do you mix technology into it that's very simple it's very simple when you have this new world order and it's not the one they're thinking about you make sure that everything that happens and there are countries on this world on this planet right now that have something called el pachamama where every decision must respect and be approved by the environment first well, you change that slightly because the hoppy told us there's two things in this the environment and the old teachings didn't we yeah the hoppy said the change is coming the old teachings will prevail well then you have two things you put in as the major doctrine for change number one it must honor the environment number two it must in honor indigenous old ways now the old ways don't tell you you've got to hunt with a bow and an arrow that's not what they tell you. They always tell you about how to do ceremony. Yeah, and if you are going to hunt, you respect the animal. You right, continue, you give yeah, reverence. and you do ceremony before you do that, yeah. if you are going to hunt, and how you respect other people and the way you deal with other people, that's all part of the old way. We have a new way now where primarily it's all about me and what I can get and bugger off the rest of you. I don't care anymore. And it's not working. There are old ways of doing things that have to be done, but you can live in a house with electricity as long as the electricity is gained properly where it doesn't make smoke, which means we get rid of all those ways of doing things. But the point being, I'm we pretty can sure Tesla those. had some plans of making free electricity. I'm sure, I'm sure that some people still have Tesla's plans. Don't worry, they won't all burn. The problem is the people who have his plans aren't good people, but that's going to change mm. too. All those things will be resolved because don't worry, the aliens know how to do this too and they'll show us. And they're waiting for the change because when it is, they're going to come down too and help us and guide us. But they will not come. And I think I want to close with this. There's a reason why they won't come. And I did ask um, Mesrif once, why don't you come and help? Because we're in a mess. He said, we can't right now. He said it would be like breaking into a child's bedroom when he's holding a gun. Yeah, I mean, um, Arthur C. Clark wrote a book. Um, uh, childhood's end and the aliens came down and took over and said look you know this is how you have to live and a group of humans rebelled against them going no we want the choice to destroy the world if we want to destroy the world mm -hmm. so we still have the choice 
but let's try not to destroy the world. Well, they don't have the choice now because that was done three years mm -hmm. ago. But what I am going to say is, ladies and gentlemen, in the meantime, in the, the little time that's left, if you want to create a new world, it begins within. You've got to learn that it's got to start within and then then, then it can't, goes without. And at the moment, don't look for a leader. And I'm going to tell you now, if you're saying I'm following whoever that leader is and they're going to lead me to that land, they won't. You've got to do it yourself. And the Hoppy said this too, didn't they? They did. They were quite adamant. Yeah, they were adamant that you go to the fast-flowing stream. And they talked about the time for the lone wolf was over too. The time of the lone wolf where they just prey on others is gone. You go to the stream. Some will be hanging on to the onto the banks and they won't let go. Don't worry about it. You jump in there and you rejoice with those who are there. You didn't follow them, but you rejoice with the ones who are there. So that's what this change is about, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, um, that's a good way to finish this. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know how long we've gone, but that, that works out pretty well. So change from within and the rest is easy. Works out like that. Beautiful guys, it does work out like that, and uh, you know, change begins with the self, and uh, once the uh, self begins to change, then uh, that has the uh, ripple effect, and uh, and that's how it's going to be. You know, no one can lead you to the land of milk and honey. You know, uh, only you can do that. You don't need gurus. You don't need life coaches. You know, you don't need masters. Uh, you know, you don't need any of that. All you need is. You know, watchers talk and a little bit of uh, <laughs> self awareness. <laughs> oh my God. You know, with all jokes aside, you know, self awareness is uh, is where it begins. And uh, you know, as I've been saying, you know, the Earth, the Earth is uh, what it is. It's been here for you know for eons now, and it's going to be here for eons. But we're not going to be here for eons. And uh, we need to change ourselves and uh, we need to, you know, realize the error of our ways and uh, correct that and, uh, you know, say no more. I refuse to live like this. And uh, and that's it, you know, and, and make a commitment like, uh, for instance, myself, you know, I say, uh, you know, I'm not going to buy anything that is uh, made in China, you know, and uh, now <clears throat> now when I go out shopping. I'm looking at uh, all the uh, all the brands and where it's made. And uh, if it's made in China, I won't buy it because that's the lifestyle uh, change that I've decided to make for myself because I would rather have manufacturing jobs here in my own country in Canada so that Canadians have a job rather than, you know, somebody else somewhere else making billions off of us. So, you know, that's just a small example of, you know, taking your stand and making your stand. And that's the only way that, uh, you know, we're going to usher in a new human, a new earth, a new way of living and uh, the a new way of compassion and empathy, because uh, all of that is currently missing. It's gone AWOL. And uh, because it's AWOL, we, uh, we have raised an army and uh, the likes of which the world has never seen before and uh, work together in, in an effort to retrieve that human soul that uh, seems to be just getting further and further and further away from us. And, uh, you know, we need to uh, interchange ourselves. So with that being said, my beautiful friends, I appreciate you guys and uh, always a wonderful message coming from you guys. And, uh, you know, speaking of our uh, alien ancestry on April the 30th, you guys have uh, chapter 28 going on mm -hmm. uh, on your guys's uh, youtube channel so uh you know maybe a quick download on that evan and then uh, we'll call it a night yeah so that's coming up for you guys over and gals over in north uh america that'll be on a saturday down here in the land down under um that's our sunday um yeah and we've got a full cast um yeah good we're gonna do kind of single sessions for each speaker and then we'll all get together towards the end and do a round table. Um, and we actually came up with some great themes and points at our last little thing, what was that, two days ago? Yeah. So yeah. we're going to incorporate some of what we were talking about there into it as well. So always evolving, but we are going to focus on what the role of the Yowies, the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot might be mm -hmm. in our future and how they can help us. So we're going to talk a lot about that. 
And, yeah, I think it's going to be a good one. So I'll try to squeeze in one last field trip. But I've got a little bit to talk about the last one I did with uh, my friends. So I'll try to paint a good picture of what it's like being out in the forest and what it feels like and what's going on there. So, yeah, it's going to be a good day. And um, come on the day because it's, it's free to watch live on the day. Yep, completely oh, cool. And uh, here's a, a quick update, uh, Evan, since the last time that we spoke the other day. What was that? Uh, yeah, two days ago, I was driving to work, and uh, there's this guy that came on the radio, and uh, he lives about uh, an hour and a half from me in, uh, in Merritt, and he's holding an all-day Sasquatch Bigfoot conference where he has, like, all of these different speakers coming in uh, on May the 13th. So I bought my ticket. So I'm going to go May the 13th, and it's all happening right. for 10 hours. And so while I'm there, I'll be shooting some videos and uh, taking some pics, and I'll send those to you so that uh, you know they can give you a uh, a perspective from from this side. You know, mm, yeah, you know, be good to have that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, so because I know you guys are like right into that. So you know, when I go, I'll I'll shoot you guys uh, some uh, some info so that you can you know we can Thank work you. together, man. Work together, not against oh, each yeah. other. All right. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, have yourself a uh, wonderful afternoon, a uh, happy day, and uh, be safe, be in love, and uh, we will uh, we'll see you soon. I'll talk to you soon anyways, Evan. Definitely. Talk to you soon. Bye.